What's better than a normal Lego car? A self-driving Lego car. Today I'm going to show you how you can bring your vehicles to life with an awesome self-driving system that allows your buses, trucks and cars to automatically navigate your city streets. This is a really versatile design that is compatible with a wide range of different vehicles and is a 100% Lego based solution so there are no third party elements and no hidden mechanisms required. In fact, you can build your own self-driving Lego car using less than 50 parts. Of course, there's lots of ways you can customize your self-driving vehicles, which can be anything from buses, to garbage trucks, station wagons, and more. Plus, this system works with a variety of street designs and road layouts, so you can really adapt it to your own Lego city. This is not the first time I've experimented with self-driving Lego cars. Several years ago, I built a motorized racetrack that involved the use of a gigantic underground conveyor belt system. And while that was cool, this took up a large amount of space and limited the types of vehicles that could be motorized. So this time, I wanted to design a system that used as few parts as possible and could work on any surface without the need for any unnecessarily complicated mechanisms. There are two main components to my new design, the road and the vehicle itself. Each vehicle is equipped with a self-guided steering system that allows it to follow the shape of the road. By default, the wheels stay straight as the vehicle moves forward, and when it reaches an obstacle such as a corner, the wheels turn to the side which changes the direction of movement for the entire vehicle, allowing it to drive around the bend. Once it reaches another straight section, the wheels gradually level out and return to the center, allowing it to continue driving straight on. To help them navigate the turns, the cars have a rounded front bumper, which helps to reduce friction as they drive next to the edge of the pavement. This is key to avoid obstacles and align the cars back on track, such as when they cross an intersection where there's no pavement on the side, the bumper helps to guide them back into place on the other end. This is a very simple but effective solution, as the cars basically adapt their path of movement depending on the direction of the road. As long as you include four corners, you can have them driving in a continuous loop. To demonstrate the versatility of this self-driving system, I've built a selection of different vehicles, each with their own unique features. First up is this sleek blue bus, which is actually the first self-driving vehicle that I designed. This is a seven stud wide build, so it features a slightly different chassis to the other six stud wide vehicles. Even though this is the longest car, it can still handle corners perfectly. Even on tight turns like this one, there's plenty of space to avoid the traffic on the other side of the road. There's just enough space for a couple of passengers inside, along with a driver at the front, and I've also managed to include a pair of working headlights, which connect to the battery box at the back. And if I remove the roof, you can see just how crowded it is in here, but I think I've done a pretty good job at tidying all of the cables. This can be switched on by pressing down on the air conditioning unit on the top of the bus, which connects it up to the Lego Powered Up app. This allows everything to be controlled wirelessly through Bluetooth, using a simple program to activate the motor and lights. This is a really neat solution, and saves a lot of space compared to using something like power functions, where I would have also had to have included an infrared receiver unit on board the bus. The next vehicle is this cool turquoise garbage truck, which is inspired by a Lego city set with a similar color scheme. This includes a moving lift that can be raised up to empty the bin inside it, along with a separate cabin section on the front. Here I've disguised the battery box inside the garbage container at the back, 
And what's cool is that the LED on the battery box actually lights up the hazard lights on the roof. As for the motor, I've intentionally left it exposed as it matches the other mechanical details underneath the truck and it looks like it's just some kind of fuel tank. For the third vehicle, I wanted to challenge myself and try to fit this self-driving mechanism inside a regular sized car. Obviously, there's nothing that can be done to reduce the size of the motor and battery box. So instead, my idea was to integrate this into the design of the car and make it into a roof mounted luggage rack. The end result is this little red station wagon, which looks like it's all packed up, ready to go on vacation. The only part which I couldn't think of a way to fit in is the cable, but maybe this can make a little bike rack. This is possibly the smallest self-driving car you can make using the powered up system, but what about the other types of Lego motors? The smallest one that exists is the micro motor, and the 9 volt battery box is also pretty compact, so that's what I used to make this fourth car a small green Land Rover. This is significantly smaller than the red car and absolutely tiny compared to the other vehicles, but it still manages to include a complete self-driving mechanism. This was a real challenge to squeeze everything inside and you can see how I've had to make use of every available area, like this cable which goes up through this panel on the side, up through to the windscreen, to connect to the battery box on top. The micro motor is not that powerful, so it's not very quick, and is not nearly as reliable as the full sized powered up vehicles, but this was still a fun experiment to make the smallest possible self driving car. So now let's take a look at what you'll need to build your own self driving system. These are the two most basic chassis designs that you can start with as a base for your vehicles, one for six wide cars and one for seven wide. Both of these frames have a similar design with a bumper on the front, followed by the steering mechanism, then a space for the motor and a drive shaft at the back. These are the same chassis that I'm using in my own vehicles, so there's a lot of ways you can customize these. The only really complex part is the steering, and you can see how that's constructed if I disassemble it a bit, but everything else here is fairly straightforward to build. As for the road, this is even easier to build, as you just need to line your straight sections with straight tiles, and use this combination of wedge plates for the corners. You can obviously decorate this and build this into your surrounding street pavement, but this is just a bare minimum that you need for it to work. If you are joining two corners together, you can skip a couple of the wedge plates at the top and instead use some two wide tiles to create a shallower curve where the corners meet each other. I'm using traditional road base plates, but you can just as easily build this with the newer tiled road plate system instead. And that's basically everything you need to get your self driving system going. If you decide to build this yourself, then I'd love to see what other types of cars you'll make, so please be sure to share your designs in the comments. Please give the video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for even more awesome LEGO creations. I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.